Hey folks, Matt here, and today we're in New Bedford, Massachusetts to visit Purchase Street Records. We're gonna check out the store, we're gonna talk to Roger, the owner, and trust me, it's gonna be a very metal episode of the show, so definitely stick around. So, I used to own a tattoo shop. Um, I really got sick of being, not sick, it, it just got tiresome. Um, so I ended up getting rid of the shop. And I started buying and selling goods. Um, let it be little cars, to action figures, to blue jeans. And then I started buying records. Um, I've always been a musician, played drums in local hardcore bands. Mm -hmm. That never became regional, but like Northeast, I guess, VFW famous. Okay. Yeah. And then um, from that point, um, you know, I was always in touch with music. My uncle played drums for Billy Squire. His name was Bobby Chouinard. Yeah. He played for everybody. You wrote a book on him. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And now people want too much money on eBay for it because okay. I don't have any more. Yeah. But which is, it is what it is. Sure, sure. Um, but it, it was just one of those things. I've always been around music. My father used to play records in the middle room. Yeah. You know, um, then I just bought a record collection and put it out for a couple of dollars a piece, probably put it out too, too short. Yeah. And it was just a continuous thing. And I, I know music pretty well, not all genres, but more of the rock and roll, metal, punk, sure. era-esque. Yeah. And, in, uh, and it worked, seems to work for this location. Yeah. Speaking of which, you are in a new location. Yes, we moved out of downtown yeah. um, due to parking, due to size restraints. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very hard to, for us to um, recreate ourselves. Yeah. Like I remember if, the old store. Yeah. You yeah, have a lot downstairs in the basement that you were slowly bringing up it, incrementally. It was a, definitely a fire hazard. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was just like we would walk downstairs, break our ankles. Like it, it just right. couldn't find anything at some points because this will be this will be put here, that'll be put here and you know it right. just it just got old. Yeah. Really got old. Of course. You know. And you are keeping the name Purchase Street Records. Yeah, I printed too many shirts. Exactly. Um, well, it's just too many things out there on us. Sure, yeah. So then the the person is just, after five years, going, hey, let's go to Purchase Street. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. just like, you know, between the online searches, the reviews, the everything we put out. And, and it's not unheard of for someone to hang on to a street name store. We had a video store in Burlington called Waterfront Video and they yep. moved from the waterfront, kept the name, yeah. and we're gonna let go of it. My buddy owns Center Street Drums I, in, in Taunton and he's in a studio, yeah. in a uh, music studio. Yeah. So it's just like, and he kept that name. So cool. I asked him about it, he goes, keep it, who cares? Yeah. Why not? You did talk about some of the other things you sell besides records. One of the things I note when I came in here last time were the t-shirts, specifically the custom Purchase Street Records t-shirts, yep. which are really cool. Uh, tell me about this. Um, we just do limited runs. Um, this way we don't get sued. You know, I really don't make a lot of money uh -huh. here. I don't want to go to jail. If people come in sometimes just for the shirts. Mm -hmm. But we do hoodies, yep. um, hats. We do um, all kinds of stuff. Do you have yeah. area artists? Or something yeah, that um, my buddy Steve, um, a tattoo artist. Um, Russell Townsend, another tattoo artist. My buddy Teddy Goods, he does um, Goods graphics. He does a lot of, you know, a lot of the mix up, the mashup stuff that we do. Right on, cool. Um, of course, the big reason I come to the shop is for the hard rock and heavy metal. Uh, right. You're also a fan, as I know. Oh yeah. I, uh, tell me how about tell me how you discovered metal. Artie Fleshman. Yeah. And we were, God, I don't even remember. Um, we had this basketball hoop on the corner, mm -hmm. and brought his boombox over, and he played Ozzy over the mountain. Right. And I just remember the the drums. Yeah. That drum intro. Yeah. And it's just. I was just like, oh my God, what is this? So the drummer had caught you first, kind of thing. Ah, just, just the aggressiveness yep. of that coming out. Uh -huh. and, you know, so in a sense, I almost discovered Ozzy because of my age. Yep. You know, prior to Black Sabbath. Yeah. You know, so like that era of music. And then, you know, obviously with my uncle being involved with Billy Squire, but like that brought through the, the 80s rock ass of heart. Um, Pat Benatar, right. which was very prominent on MTV, and they didn't really play that, yeah. you know, the, the real heavier stuff until obviously the, you know, Headbangers yep. Ball and all that. Right. Was. Absolutely. So I, you know, tend to hang out with a couple of friends, and we, you know, Kiss, Motley Crue, yeah. like the heaviest record 
1983 of 84, yeah. you know, were those first two Motley Crue records. Yep. Because they were they were more on a commercial, able be able to to find those records and yeah. to hear Vince scream at that time, Tommy's drums, the, the loud guitar. Yep. You know, Absolutely. have the tape go shout at the devil. You know, it's just yeah. like it says devil. And it's just right. Like of course. when you were a kid, you're like, my Whoa. brain automatically. Oh yeah. I got it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you're a musician, and you've done so many other things, but you are also a roadie, or a drum tech, I should say. Yeah, I worked, bands. I worked, um, after my mom passed, I got out of a band called Closer Than Kin, that I put out the record, that was on LP, and you can get it at purchasestreetrecords.com. There you go. Um, uh, we, we had a bad breakup, no one really contacted me. We're friends now, but no one really contacted me during that time really put a bad taste in my mouth and I was just like I'm never touching drums again I'm good oh wow okay and then um, this guy Alan St. John which played keyboards for Billy Squire Michael Bolton Alice Cooper's trash record did a lot of stuff with my uncle contacted me and says hey we need a drum tech for uh, this project which was D. Snyder's um, version of Trans-Siberian Orchestra okay which was Van Helsing's Curse huh so I drove up to New York City I met Joe Franco. Joe just, yep. yeah, put take down my stuff. You know, I ended up, you know, just becoming a roadie. Yeah. And then I worked with them for a while. And then the bass player from, from that project played guitar for uh, Overkill. Okay. So, and then from that point on, I became Twisted Sisters drum tech on a local situation. It worked it's with Overkill. Agent, huh? Yeah, he's a super nice dude. Yeah. Um, what an unbelievable drummer. Yeah. Like, for the side. For the size of the dude, like I yeah. just sat there and I, I watched him. I remember it was like a dream lineup on in Long Island. It was Twisted Sister, Metal Church, Wasp, who, uh, who had Stet Holland, a local guy on yeah. drums at that time. Um, Stephen Piercy, L.A. Guns, L.A. Guns. One of the guys ended up. Um, it was the Phil Lewis um, lineup. Yep. Didn't have Tracy. Okay. Yep. And then. I ended up talking to the shirt person. They're like, "We're looking for a tour manager. You want to be the tour manager?" And I almost did it, yeah. but I was doing a project for Billy Squire at the time, so I just didn't go on the road. Yeah. But um, I saw the world with Overkill. Super yep. nice guys. Yep. Still pound. Um, I still see them from time to time. I have a lot of fun with them. Nice. They're good dudes. Last time we talked, uh, didn't you have some sort of uh, dealing with Motorhead with Lemmy? Did you hang out with him or? Yeah, we. Um, it was the first day of the tour or second day of the tour they, in Germany they it was just a German run type thing yeah. they played airplane hangers and we were told listen Americans aren't liked around this area so try to stick to the venue you know <laughs> we were just like ah whatever right. of course we didn't but uh, we were walking along like a a scaffolding it didn't have any it was <laughs> super did definitely did not pass any um any tests or you know uh -huh. anything like that with the town yeah. over there but I came up on somebody holding on for dear life onto the wall yeah. and it was Lemmy so I took my flashlight and I walked him over uh -huh. and it was fun yeah. it was fun I became friends I don't want to became friends with him but I met him um, in the mornings I had breakfast with him nice. and super nice guy Sweet. So you also do in-store appearances sometimes we try to yeah um, we try we did D Snyder yep. um, Michael Sweet, Stet Holland, and the thing is, it's all to everybody's schedule. Yeah. So I tried to do a few here. We did just did Adam and the Metal Hawks, um, young band, super talented. Yeah. Right. We try to make everybody happy. We're a lot of people's favorite store and a lot of people's least favorite store. Oh, okay. You know, it's I can't have everything. Of course, yeah. I really can't. Yeah. Um, but I come to work every day, um, and. It's, the other guys that helped me out here really kick ass and yeah. I couldn't do it without them you know and it's just one of those things that you know we come here and make this place the best how we like it you know some people come in here and they're very disappointed and they walk out but uh, there's a lot less than there is more of that cool Perch Street Records on Instagram Facebook and the dot com um, we try to do uh, as much as we can if if you do inbox us cool so thanks man you're welcome all right so since we're in massachusetts of course we're also with eric say hello eric 
What's up, folks? Yep. So Eric and I went to Purchase Street Records. We had a really awesome time. Eric drove. Yep, yep. Uh, to get there from Worcester, you have to drive down through Rhode Island and Providence, Rhode Island. So yep. it's kind of a pain in the neck, but it's not that bad. It's like an hour and a half ride. Yep. It's almost like driving all the way to Cape Cod because New Bedford's down along the coast down that way. Lots of boats, lots yeah. of water. Well, it's, the, it's, it's famous for being the whaling city around here. A lot of whaling happened back in the, well, I think it was the 1600s. It's a whale of a good time. Yes, it is. Right on. But uh, that, was, that was my second time going to Purchase Street Records. Yeah. I, had, I had driven down there once before, and it's definitely one of the best record stores in the, in the region, I yeah. think, as, as far as metal goes. <laughs> Speaking of where they are, of course, uh, Roger said they're in a new location. Yeah, a right. lot more room. Yeah, yeah, they're right on Route 6. Yep. It's like on an island in between, in between New Bedford and the, the town to the east mm-hmm. called Fairhaven. Right away, a much bigger selection than oh, the yeah. old store. If you were at the old store and you haven't gone to the new one yet, get down there. Lots more records to go through. It took me quite a bit to go through them. A couple yeah. hours, it seemed. And it's not just metal. There's hard rock, there's hip-hop, mm-hmm. jazz, country. Yep. And, he, and he has t- tapes and uh, um, CDs. And he's got shirts. Yep. Memorabilia, toys, memorabilia, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, DVDs, Definitely. all kinds of stuff. It's a, there's a lot packed in the store. That's for sure. Yeah. So what do you think of Roger? Yeah, Roger's a really nice guy. Yeah, He's very friendly. Yep. He always says hello to you when you come, especially yep. if he recognizes you from previous visits. Absolutely. You know, and I always love to tell him, "Oh, I'll be back." Yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to thank Roger. He was very amenable, mm. for letting us shoot around the store and do all of that. Very cool about that. So yeah. Thumbs up for that guy. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I'm glad to give him business. Absolutely. So, of course, as for the heavy metal records and hard rock as well, um, I'm not going to tell you what we bought. That's going to be in a separate video for yeah, yeah. patrons only, and I'll get into that in a few minutes. But We found lots of goodies. Oh, yeah. Lots of goodies. They definitely have bootlegs there. Mm-hmm. That's of interest. Uh, some great stuff on the wall, you know, the expensive records up there. Yeah, the rare ones. I definitely wanted that Don't Break the Oath from Russell Fade. Uh, I kept eyeing it, but I was buying way too many records. I spent almost 800 bucks, yeah, I think a little bit more. I spent a little before. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It's a good time. If you're into shopping for music, it's definitely a good location yeah. to go to, that's for sure. Great selection of old and new metal, uh, yeah, or uh, recent uh, metal, I don't want to say new metal. Yeah, well, what's funny is that uh, it, he has so much metal that he has like a separate section for death and black metal. And yeah. And he has a section for traditional metal and yeah. speed metal and stuff. So look through all of those bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Absolutely. You know, there's a section with Iron Maiden, there's a section with death, and there's a section with uh, Motley Crue, you know. Yep. It's pretty cool. Very, very cool. And then I'm glad, glad you came down for the week too. You know, yeah. He, I came down for a whole week here to Worcester. Well, we, both of us went to see two classic metal bands recently. We did. We went to see Judas Priest on Sunday night. With Boston, Queensryche. With Queensryche in Boston. Yep. And then the next night here in Worcester, Iron Maiden played. With, yeah. Uh, with, Within Temptation, I think was the name of the backup band. But yeah, we were, saw five minutes of it. Yeah, we didn't right. see too much. Sure. But they were, eh. Yeah. But Iron Maiden was fantastic. Great as, shows as was Priest overall. And, Priest and Queensryche were great, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you stay in the whole week because uh, yep. on Friday we have Witch Trap from Columbia coming to town. So yep. we're going to go to that too. Yep. So I'm just always glad to have you over, man. <laughs> right on, man. So if this is your first time at this channel, just to let you know, my name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network. And for the most part, I do videos on metal vinyl collecting. Sometimes I visit record stores, sometimes with friends. Um, but I also do classic and modern metal in general. That sounds like it's of interest. Give me a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and share this video with some of your friends. Of course, I did mention Patreon before. You should check out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash the Accusation Network. We will have our vinyl haul, the one Eric and I did at Purchase Street Records there, but Eric and I have also done other post Record Store Report vinyl hauls. You should go check all those videos out. They're very exclusive. Uh, You'll also see my public videos up to seven days early there, so you should definitely check that out, see what you can do. Other than that, I definitely want to thank you, Eric, for uh, the ride up, the company, all of that, and of course being here. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a forward.